Hello everyone, well for the last few years I've been maintaining a block list for NoTrack. This contains tracking, advertising, malware and recently annoyance domains. Annoyance being things like cookie pop-ups. Things that you can block via DNS, not just with browser add-ons. So this list is a bit of a size, as you can see there on the screen it's, well, it's getting off about 15,000 domains in there. So it's probably quite a lot for one person to maintain. And yeah, I've been doing a lot of updates here, pushing further and further towards automation because automation is the key for a lot of things. How to do more with less resource and less people resource that is. The block list downloads are stored on GitLab in a few different files. So I've actually recently added the hosts and uncommented versions of the block list. But what we have is a very long list of domains in here with attribution where I can and as to what they are. The master lists are stored in SQL database and this is where I've been trying to do more work on and trying to improve automation here. So I've got some Python scripts which can go through the domains, see how active they are and this is in terms of number of DNS queries through OpenDNS. This is a pay for service so I can't share that one but yeah I can look through that. And I can do searches for new domains where they have uh, certain, let's say, formats to the domain names so they are possible to find. And one of these, for example, is S metrics. Uh, come on, there we go. Can keep going. S metrics, there we are. So Adobe's trackers done through C names, so not easy to block. But yeah, if you can find domains that are starting with S metrics, that is generally related to Adobe. Now, some of this I had done before with the automation of finding these and the automation of deleting old domains. But what I've moved towards now is adding more information in the table. If I look at the master table now, I have the type of domain it is. So these are recent ones are submissions. And yeah, then I've got tracker advertising and some here auto tracker. So these are things that have been found automatically but the domains may or may not be active. So I leave them in there for a while until they become active. Those figures on the right hand side are like mean hourly and max hourly visits. So there's a lot to do with you know, getting to know that bit of information there. The thing is my API is rate limited or more like total limitation per day really. So I'm not actually sure what the full figure is, but it takes a little while to go through all this. It's certainly not something that could be done in one go. Oh, not only am I going to get the statistics here, and this is sort of statistics of whether it's actually worth blocking or dropping domains in this list, but I'll also be able to get countries. Like if a domain is visited primarily by one country, then I will eventually have a block list for that country or that, for that region. So I'm thinking sort of likes of America, Europe, Russia, China, um, depending how many other domains we find, then yeah, maybe we'll go for Africa, Australia, or Australasia, I should say. All this will come, but for now, I'm just trying to improve my automation here. So I've had this list updating script for a while now, and it just downloads the files from my website and then re-uploads them to GitLab. But what I want to do is stick this onto a Raspberry Pi and upload the list, or at least check for an upload every day. So I've got some certain error correction here or more like recognition if something's gone right or wrong. So for example here on wget, so I check the exit status of wget and if it's non-zero then I want to be able to stop. So that's like error downloading file or some other errors that have happened and then just going to exit out of it. But also check in the file size. Is it the number of lines that I expect in the file? So I had all this before. It's very crude, but it does sort of work. But something I've recently added is using diff to actually compare the lines in the file. So I don't necessarily update the block list every day, but that kind of means I don't want to just download the block list every day. Uh, there is a comment in the block list saying the date on it when it was downloaded. So that file is always going to be different, but you know, just because the date has changed doesn't mean I'll, that warrants a whole upload to GitLab. So what I'm doing is comparing the non-commented lines, excluding commented lines using diff. And if it's different, or well, if it's different, it will be a non-zero. So yeah, if the output of diff is zero, then 
file is the same and I just return one on this function. Or otherwise we're gonna copy the temp file to a new file and return zero. And that all leads on to a bit more checking here in the, the sort of main bit. And essentially I'll keep an eye on this updated variable here. So if something has changed, updated equals true. And all the way down here, if updated is true, then we commit update of the current date and then push to git. So the scripts are all written. The concept of how this is all going to work is written. But what I want to do is chuck it onto a Raspberry Pi. Let it loose with some cron jobs and then put my feet up and relax. Or more like, get stuck into doing something else. So I'm gonna stick good old Ubuntu server on the Raspberry Pi. And now this is gonna use the Raspberry Pi imager, something which I've used quite a few times now. So yeah, just get a micro SD card and then stick it onto a Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna use an older Pi this time around. I'm gonna use a Pi 2, just cause I've got one sitting around and it's probably lower energy usage. I've just powered on the Raspberry Pi for the first time not set a static IP address, so I've had to find it on the network. It was here, so yes, that's fine. Uh, what was the password for Ubuntu server? <laughs> was it Ubuntu by any chance? Hmm, good question. Now I've used an old Raspberry Pi Model 2. So it's a little bit slower than the more modern devices. Ah, yes, I did get it right. So current password, and I give it a new password. And that is it, so close connection. And now I wanna go back to yeah, SSH. God, these are very old, very old and slow. Kind of takes you back really how slow the old Pi 2s were. So first things first, I have to set host name and I was gonna go with Welsh girl's name and what was I gonna decide for this one? I was thinking mountain. Blockade, block list, yeah, something like that. I did notice mountain in this list. Uh, where was it? Mountain in Wales, Manod. So M A N O D. I'll do. Set host name Manod. He's a D. That'll do it. And then uh, wait, what? Helps if you type the full name in, doesn't it? So sudo hostname ctl set hostname Manod.tzd. That'll do it. So now I have to go and set it up by adding my username. Yep, add user quids. And I'm gonna want, so set a new password. <laughs> Let's try again. <laughs> yep, all good. Now to set the group access rights for quids. Uh, this might be an old list that I've got, but it's ADM sudo video audio plug dev input. I don't think all those are needed now, but definitely ADM sudo. Anyway, I'll go with it. Maybe I'll update my instructions one day. Let's test out my access rights for quids and and then test out to see if I got sudo right. So yes, I do. Excellent. I'm gonna reboot now because I've just assigned it a new IP address. I'm gonna remove the old default Ubuntu account. Yep, no further need for that. So I've got sudo rights, I've got everything I need now. So off you go. Now I wanna generate a key to use on GitLab. I can't show you the full process here because this is going to contain sensitive information. But essentially that's the idea. SSH keygen dash T E D two five five one nine and give it a comment or name. Then I need to view the contents of it with cat. It will then output some text which I can use in GitLab in the SSH keys. And with that set up, I can then test the SSH connection. And that happens, I get the welcome to GitLab. So now let's go and clone the project. So clone with SSH, yeah, that'll do. It's only git clone and then, yeah, that SSH link there. So cloning into no track block lists. Now I have to get the annoyance block list, which is an aside to the main block list because I was a bit worried about it being caught out by a DMCA because of uh, one of the companies that features in that block list. They went after like the ad block block list because they didn't believe they were advertising. So that's why I had to call them an annoyance because they are an annoyance and I'm actually not saying anything wrong about them. I'm not sure they agree with themselves being an annoyance, but yeah, that's, that's a good way of viewing them. Not advertising, not malware, not tracking, but an annoyance. So essentially I can just go across to one of those block lists and if I do bash list update, so yeah, same as, no changes made, nothing to commit. 
So I want to create a cron job now. How do I do cron jobs? I've not done these for quite a while. Cron tab dash e using an empty one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I want to use nano. I was having a bit of trouble understanding why my cron jobs weren't working correctly, but it turned out to be because I'm not controlling where I am on the folders properly. If I'd done it better in the script, then I wouldn't need this, but I didn't. So what I've done is change across the folder in the cron tab, or cron jobs, and then run the script. It was, it was a bit frustrating seeing that an update was being made, but then not seeing that in GitLab. So what I want to do for the cron job, I'm going to kick something off for a couple of minutes time. So let's say minute seven, hour 16, uh, day of the week or day of the month first is anything, month anything, day of the week anything. And then we'll run the command cd slash. So I change across the folder and then run the script, the script which I've made executable. So save that, yes, and write it. So installing new cron tab, and in a couple of minutes time, I should see the update here over on GitLab. Right, so 07, let's see what happens if I refresh. I wasn't doing that, I don't think I've actually made a change to that repository. So I'm gonna go back to the annoyance block list because I've just deleted one. So let's see if it updates at 09. <laughs> Oh, nine minutes past, nine minutes past four. Right, it's nine minutes past, and if I refresh, all for just now, brilliant. So that should be remove one, yep, yeah, test. <laughs> that was just trying to make it work. So that's it, that works. Cron job has uh, done its job, hey. <laughs> so I'm thinking of doing the updates around nine o'clock in the evening for the block lists. Um, I suppose with cron jobs, I can just change it to another point in the day, so if I wanna do two hourly updates, then yeah, I could do something like that. In fact, it should be the other way around technically, I think there, but whatever, it just demonstrates a point that I could run it at nine o'clock and four o'clock. So that is it. The Raspberry Pi is gonna sit there now and do the updates in the evening for a cron job, and it'll only update if there is something to update. So that's if I've made a change to the master block list throughout the day. So one job less to do now. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.